How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Now that the Pokemon games Scarlet and Violet have received information about where we're going to be going for the DLC, we're going to be heading to the Kinagami region or location. I don't even know what to refer to it as. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC, the hidden treasure of Area Zero. Now, the question becomes will we see any further inclusions of new Paradox forms or new Pokemon of sorts? And we're still kind of unsure of how far spread Paradoxes are. Are they something only in Paldea or will we also see that in Kitakami, the region which we're going to be going to in the part one of the DLC and most likely in part two as well. So we have those questions and we're still unsure of what we're going to see. And we do know also that the third legendary, Tapagos, which was revealed to be included in the part two of the DLC, is the reason for paradoxes even existing most likely. So the question then is, uh, what are we going to get? Are we going to get brand new paradoxes? And if so, which ones will we receive? Well, let's have ourselves a look at exactly that. What are some of the paradox Pokemon we can expect to see in Pokemon Scarlet? and Violet's The Hidden Treasure of Area Zero's DLC. Let's go. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit on the side of Pokemon Scarlet on my end. I prefer that game, and some of the paradoxes in that actually look way cooler than some of the ones that I feel like are on the other end of the spectrum in Violet, but I've gotta be honest, there is a specific, specific kind of disadvantage to being one of the future Pokemon because there feels like a more of a limited aspect of what they can become. Hence why I think this design right here by Max Fakemon is a perfect look at what a Paradox Pikachu could look like. Now remember, Paradox Pokemon aren't actually Pokemon from the past. They're just imagined version of Pokemon. Like they're just an imagined version of Pokemon that we have in our regular world. So they're kind of just concocted by the Paradox Pokemon itself, or rather the third legendary is what concocts these things into existence. And right here, we have one of the Pokemon, which would be a Paradox Pikachu. This was designed by Max Fakemon, who put together a Pokemon that would be a lost page on the Scarlet Book. And this one is freaking amazing. This basically resembles a past form of Pikachu, and it would be dubbed the Storm Tyrant, which also makes sense. Also, it would be receiving an electric dragon typing, with of course having the ability Protosynthesis, which you guys already know. It basically increases the user's highest stats by 30% while the sun is activated, or if the booster energy is attached. And also, in terms of lore, he includes the following. It seems that in the past, Pikachu had much more dominant niche in the environment, producing lightning energy much more pure and potent than modern day counterparts. And this is honestly really freaking cool. This would be a kind of interesting combination of a lot of things. It does look a little bit more like a caveman, I'm not gonna lie, but I also like the more sinister eyes on this thing. And the horns are just mwah, perfect, straight up amazing. So yeah, personally, I'd love this one. Now, I can't only give love to Pokemon Scarlet. We also have Violet, and the, one of the cool things about the Violet ones is that they have really cool designs as well. Some of them can be a bit boring, but a lot of them can be incredibly cool. And one of my personal favorite Pokemon is Nidoking. So what if Nidoking received a Violet Paradox form that's more futuristic? Well, that's what we see right here from Albert Wilson on Instagram. Well, he put together the Iron Rain, and here you can see something very, very sick. Now, this is a straight up version of Nido King. That's a just beast, okay? It just looks incredible. It just looks awesome. And you guys can kind of see in terms of the colors that it does have that futuristic aspect to it. I would assume this thing to still remain its, you know, regular poison typing, but perhaps also gaining a steel typing. I think a steel typing on this would make it really useful, make it super freaking, you know, like strong, but also just make it into a very epic addition to Nidoking. Nidoking is a Pokemon that I personally love. It's one of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 1, if not the favorite Pokemon of mine from Gen 1, but it never has really received much in terms of love in any way or shape. It hasn't really received any forms or anything, so it'll be nice to actually see it finally get some attention. It is one of those few Pokemon that I'm really surprised hasn't received any further, you know, just anything. It just hasn't gotten anything. So it'd be nice to see it finally get some love. Now, this monster rises out of Area Zero, and it's a mysterious creature. Its bizarre appearance matches per perfectly with the machine mentioned in the Violet Book, the mighty Iron Barrier. It creates indestructible shields, rotating the spikes on its arms. They're so powerful that they can deflect a meteorite. Are you ready to catch Iron Barrier? Oh boy, this is a freaking sick design. Now, this would be a grass psychic type, which we kind of already have now, so it's not super necessary. But I will say, this is a cool looking design. Now, we are talking about a Pokemon here that just generally doesn't get enough love to begin with. I'm not the biggest, you know, fan of its original, you know, the regular version of it. But getting a Paradox form or Paradox Pokemon version of it like this is freaking incredible. It just makes it look cooler and having a straight up shield, almost like a weird Captain America concoction, 
actually works. Like it genuinely looks like something I personally would be all aboard with. Like seriously, I'm all in on this. This this looks freaking epic. It is actually looks really cool. But again, how would this work? You know, we kind of already have a lot of this kind of stuff going on. And I feel like the starter Pokemon are the ones that are least likely to get any sort of new forms, which is unfortunate to say because it would be cool to see them. But I do think that they are least likely to get Paradox forms just because they seem to be focusing the Paradoxes on more like less popular Pokemon, let's say like that, right? Like Pokemon that aren't as prevalent, right? And starters are kind of the top echelon, and I don't really expect to see any Paradox versions of them, at least for now, maybe in the future, but we'll have to wait and see for that. Another one of the lost pages of the Violet book talks about the Paradox Torkoal. Now, this one is really interesting, interesting actually. Researchers think it may resemble a future Torkoal, and have dubbed it the Iron Fission. Now, Iron Fission would be the nuclear Pokemon, which might be a little bit extreme to call it, but either way, this would be a fire water type, and you can see why though. It's literally just kind of fusing together water and fire and creating these reactions, which of course is going to be a way for it to use its different attacks. As for ability, it would have Quark Drive, which increases, of course, the highest stats by 30%, while Electric Terrain is activated, or if the booster energy is attached. And in terms of the lore for this Pokemon, basically it follows as such. It seems that in the future, nuclear power has become norm, and nuclear fission-based generators were created for us for use in the home and were modeled after the Torkoal of the past, which is kind of crazy that we'd be using them like this, but I think it would honestly be really sick. And personally, I'm a big fan of this. They basically combined nuclear power, Torkoal, and Paradox all into one, and this is what we got. And honestly, I'm personally all for it, but big fan. Again, you know, it's just what I think. If you guys think differently, you can always let me know in the comment section down below. But again, that's just my opinion. And to finish things off, we're looking at the Paradox Hone Edge. Now, this is also one from the Lost Pages of the Violet book. And this one, researchers think, may resemble a future Hone Edge. And I've dubbed it the Iron Saber. Now, Iron Saber is the dark Pokemon, as it's going to be a fire and dark type. As for its ability, it's of course going to be Quark Drive again, which increases the user's high stat by 30% while act you know, electric terrain is activated, or if the booster energy is attached. As for the lore behind this one, it seems that in the future, swords as a form of defense have come back into fashion, and Hone Edge were modified using flames from a rare species of Moltres, creating malevolent living weapons with a toggleable flame blade. And as you can see, yes, the actual design of this uses the flames and design from the Galarian Moltres. You guys can actually see that if you actually compare it, but I personally am, again, all aboard for this. Honestly, it looks really cool. I would be all for it. I would love that in my team, and I think it's a cool design. Now, of course, we do have to talk about the fact that how likely are more, you know, paradoxes to show up, and will we even see them in the DLC as we're going to be kind of going outside of Paldea? I personally think there might be that case. We know that the third legendary is going to be showing up within the DLC. In the second DLC in, per in particular, we will be seeing the, you know, third legendary. And that third legendary is the one that most likely created paradoxes to begin with. I mean, it even has Terra in its name. So it definitely is connected to it, which then means that it also might be the thing that created all these paradoxes. Pokemon, and if we're going to see it in the DLC, then most likely we will see more Paradox Pokemon. Now, what do you guys think about the choices I made in this video? Let me know, and of course, check out all the artists that I mentioned down in the description. And if you guys want to see another video like this, if you want to see more videos like this, let's try to get this video to 500 likes, and we'll make a part two. Either way, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, and bye-bye.